gosh. So many newspapers this yeah, morning. Yeah, so many of them. Mm. As usual, it's a Monday, so yeah, uh, they have to be back in business. That's true. Okay, so um, shall I do the daily graphic, the finder, and... Well, I'll do these two to begin with, and then we'll see what else we have on our table. Um, the finder, I think, that's where I'd like to begin. Uh, and uh, they report these. Uh, first of all, 11.3 million Ghana cities bank fraud is the banner headline. Um, uh, police arrest staff of defunct Unibank over illegal transfers. Wow. Um, also, over 90% of banking fraud comes from employees. That's according to the Bank of Ghana. Wow. I wonder what that says about the Bank of Ghana's ability to regulate the sector economic management team dominate media discussions of 2019 budget and yes uh, we saw the information ministry working with the economic management team to distribute themselves across various media houses mm. and to, that's um, commendable yes okay. answer questions okay. and so forth 2019 budget thumbs up from tuc now for the little kids who will be buying or reading copies of the finder today thumbs up is t-h-u-m-b-s uh, small printing error here has let it come out as T H U M P S, but that is not the correct spelling. Okay, thumbs, you know, thumbs. You have two of them, one on each hand. Okay, thumbs up from T U C. Uh, and finally, Ofusampofo, NDC's new chairman. And there you go. That's the Finder newspaper. Let's do the daily graphic real quick. I have it here. And banner headline this time around is all about the NDC's uh, Congress. For example, for chairs NDC, Asidun Ketia, still General Secretary. Mm. Very difficult to defeat Asidun Ketia. Police commander in critical condition after being shot by assailants. That's a troubling story from the uh, Ashanti region. And a couple of sports stories from the back page. And it's all about our women making us proud on the football pitch. Narrow win for black queens in women's AFCON. And Cameroon go top of Group A. And, uh, well, they did a, they did a stel stel stellar job over the weekend as well. And that's it. All right, so let's uh, begin with, um, oh, well, let's continue with the Ghanaian Times, more like it. Uh, on the front page of the NDC election, is here in Katia Flores Koku. Uh, we are for Swampa for Grab's chairmanship position. We will be live from his home this morning. And uh, Mamavi Usabwaje will go there. We'll get the latest from there. Ex President Mahama accuses government of corruption. We also have Unity Air granted operating certificate to start domestic uh, flights, the Ghanaian Times. And uh, all of these stories are on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. Ex President Mahama accuses government of corruption. Unity Air granted operating certificate to start domestic flight and at the NDC election. Isiedun Ketia Flores Koku of a swamp of a grabs chairmanship position on the back page. It's about the Black Queens starting off uh, the AFCON with a win against their Algerian counterparts. Mm -hmm. It's only that um, yesterday I was, uh, I was uh, having a sneak peek of uh, the match played in the evening. It looked as if the locals just didn't go to the stadium at all. I'm thinking that we need to do something about it and try to go to the stadiums. Um, the next paper is the Daily Dispatch newspaper has on the front page, Can MPP and NDC solve their problems? NDC hit by serious infighting. MPP struggling to fulfill election promises. So either way... Uh, travel all the, all the time, mm. or perhaps uh, uh, struggling to fulfill uh, their promises and solving their problems. Uh, George Andado has been discharged. Yay. I'll uh, say good morning to you, Honorable George And uh, right, thanking all those involved in that gory accident. Mm. Okay. Uh, the, let me look at uh, the Daily Guide newspapers on the front page Mosquito Sucks, Cuckoo's Blood. At NDC's Congress, as cash goodies flow, Mahama uh, fights Nana over corruption. 
Rollins, Rollins confuses NDC with coded message. And Otun for settles and Danny Abudarift in Dagbon crisis. So those are the stories we have. Mm. No center spread today for you. So those will be it. Um, no okay. More uh, yeah, I'll do the statesman. Uh, Daily statesman has these. Uh, chaotic NDC confab ends. Anita de Soso cries foul over non-other execs. I've got a thought on that. Maybe later we'll share it. Uh, John Mahama, don't insult our intelligence. Also, Ghana Gas, standing our ground, special advertising. Oh, that's a, that's a little advertising pullout. But here's a final story from the front page of the Statesman. Managers of, Ga oh, forgive me. Managers of Ghana's economy uh, begin budget road show. That's what uh, you were referring to earlier, wasn't mm. it, Roland? On the back page, 2018 Alcon, seven things we learned. An interesting sports story there on the back of the Statesman. Maybe I'll do the heritage real quick. Um, banner headline, Mahama blasts government for political witch hunt of contractors who took huge loans from banks. 36,253 die or, uh, in road accidents in 18 years. Shocking. Afoko opens defense today. Uh, that's uh, the story regarding the murder trial, um, the, the, murder, the trial for the murder of the NPP chair, former NPP chair Adams Mahama. That's it, right? Yeah, mm. let's see. Today newspaper, okay, building collapses mm -hmm. and just seven. Uh, that's the Today newspaper, building collapses and in just seven. And uh, we brought you that story right here in Accra. The AMA mayor was there and uh, trying to make some statements on building codes and its enforcement, etc. But we all know the way we work in our country. Mm -hmm. We're more reactive than proactive. Yeah. Goes with the terrain, I guess. Hmm. That shouldn't be the status quo, but that's what it is. Right. You you want to make a, a pick or two? On yeah, some to take you know, I think um, regarding the, the the NDC confab, um, there there are so many different angles to discuss mm -hmm. there. Quite mm -hmm. an event, uh, mm -hmm. so much uh, to note. But I, I want to talk about um, this the, the final result. And Anita de Suzu, uh, you know, was very unhappy about the, the fact that when, yes, when about the fact that there were there were no evers in the main uh, sort of n none of the ever candidates won the main mm. uh, the major uh, positions. Now, I have a I have a cousin who ha has a ten year old uh, son very close to the age of my own son, so they spend some time together. And I've noticed that whenever we take them out anywhere, my son will ask for sweets or, you know, uh, junk food, like every child will. And I will tell them, uh, and I'll tell him no. In fact, they sometimes come together to me and ask, and I'll say no, um, and insist that they eat something healthy. But my cousin will give her son whatever he asks for okay you can tell she loves her boy you know and just can't say no to him whatever he asks for she gives him it's bad for him it's not great for his health but she just can't say no to him and I think the NDC when it comes to ethnicity and um, uh, what, what's the word tribalism they treat their followers in the same way they can't say no to them. Look, tribalism is not a good thing in any way, shape, or form. We need to be moving our society to the point where we don't actually care who is doing the job. We only care that they are doing it well. That's where society should be moving towards. Mm. We should be aiming there so that if it doesn't matter if the president is a fanti or a gun, we don't care who the next one is. We don't care whether the, the, it, it, he's been a fanti, so now the next one must be a, a, you know, an ever, or the next one must be from the north. We, we must be moving our society in that direction, not indulging society in its tribalism. But I realize that the NDC, even in their, in their um, constitution, they seek regional balance. So it's like, we know this bad thing that our followers like, or this bad thing that Ghanaians like, but we are going to give them more of it. You know, and that's not good. It's not good. As leaders, we need to start the conversations that will move us away from that. Um, I'm sure the people of the Volta region would like to be represented. 
in leadership. But even that desire is part of the problem. Yeah. So I'm hoping that um, you know whoever has ended up being chosen by delegates, that include, in fact, majority of delegates are from the voter region. So if they have chosen these people, then that's who they want. Yeah. So perhaps it's a good thing that now Ghanaians, you know, they, they, they don't mind uh, which part of the country you're from. They only care that you can do a good job. I think uh, adding to that, complementing your comment, is also trying to look at what literature says and history says. And if you take um, a look at the, the issues that uh, anthropology deals with across the continent, um, during the period of colonialism, we've had divisions based on tribes and re regions, and that we seem to have uh, taken on board as we transitioned as countries into independence. So you have that uh, even in, in, in other countries, um, whether in Southern Africa or mm. Eastern Africa, even West Africa, we, we, we tend to use that as a focal point for making arguments for development, etc. And we know that foremostly in recent times, mm -hmm. um, Rwanda becomes a typical example of um, taking cognizance or, 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 or creating that undue advantage yeah. uh, as a main focus of uh, topical discussion. And, mm -hmm. and, and we've seen what they try to do. The thing is that we can wish um, um, prominent tribes or majority or minority tribes away. What we can do is to try to create the necessary cohesion. Indeed, our constitution even gives that leeway for these institutions, which are public institutions, the political parties, to operate the way they are operating. Yes, yes. Because we say that even in the formation of government, the ministers, there need to be some balance. Regional balance. Yeah. Even, so yeah. when, the party, the, wins, concept. when yeah. the party wins, there needs to be a balance as mm. to what the appointment should be. Yeah. Because we feel that some tribes are more dominant than others. Mm. Yes, even in, in the more developed countries, they look at which race mm. and Latinos and all that. Mm. But I think that as a country, um, we need to, as you said, deal with it in a more specific way by changing the mindsets and the behavioral patterns of yeah. people. And that needs to be drawn home consciously, not trying rather by our own effort and deeds, try to consolidate what the myth is. Yeah. And yesterday I made a reference to, to a friend's post on Facebook when he replied me with uh, my John Online story about mm -hmm. what the lady had said. Yes. And I said a typical example is Sami Jenfi. I believe Sami Jenfi may be, may be from one of the Akan region. I don't mm -hmm. know whether it's a, she is a Bono or maybe mm -hmm. from the Ashanti region, but whatever it is, you go we're developing in such a way that you, we look at the persona and what you can bring on board. You go with a very concise message. This is what I want to do for the specific period that if I'm yeah. voted into office, I will do. And then you take your personality to the people mm. and they have to see your effort. So they have to reward the effort and the value. Mm. And human beings, we've become human capital across the world. So what you give is what will be the output. Mm. So if I come to sell my message to you, Kojo Yangson, it's because you feel that Roland Walker will be good for this role and not because of the color of my skin or perhaps how yeah. tall I am, which part of Ghana I come from, mm. and etc. And we have done that and transitioned that even into relationships and marriages. Yeah. Somebody will say, we're not going to marry from this tribe because that's... And, and that's a fundamental point. Mm. The NDC, I believe, perhaps if you look at its supporter base, may be widely spread across all the regions that many of the other parties. But then it's no excuse yeah. to say that uh, there's nobody from the Volta region in the front line. Look, we have many of the deputies who are from the Volta region. Edem Agbana, who is a deputy national youth organizer, is from the Volta region. Kobi Balo, who is a, a, a deputy, is a national organizer or something of the sort, is from the Volta region. Mm. So I, 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 I don't, and they have a number of them. There's one Ruth, there's one. So I, I, I don't know where this is coming from. Yeah. And besides, many of the delegates, like you said, are mainly or partly also from the Volta region. Because mm -hmm. if you take a look, 
many people who had settled in other regions, especially in uh, the Akan-dominated regions, yeah. had the origins from the Volta region. Mm. Either their parents were cocoa, cocoa farmers or were settler farmers, etc., yeah. but still support the NDC, even though they live in those yeah. regions. But so actually, the majority of NDC delegates are from the Volta yeah. region. So, so, when you uh, look at the IPOL, yeah. uh, 400 of them took part, 25% of the quarter of them so, were from the so, Volta so, region. So, I, I uh, think uh, it's a bit unfair. To, but to wrap up on that, you see, as a people, we really major in the minors all the time. So we are more mm. concerned about appointments going to people. Uh, uh, we are more concerned about achieving a regional balance with appointments, mm. with jobs, mm. you know, at the top, okay. not resources. Okay. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I mean, we ought to be more interested in every part of the country getting its fair share of resources, not one person from our region getting a job there. How does that help us? But that's what we care about. Yeah. We've even done that with um, the creation of region because, so, you see, by our own deeds, yeah. nationally, yeah. we're festering mm. all that thought and the myth. It's because we say th these are gr like minds and mm. group of people with, this, with homogeneous features yeah. and characteristics, so they need to have their own mm. regions. It's an and, and, upside and, down and, and way that's what of, we're doing of thinking because, about things. You know, yeah. we said that these people, oh, they, they, they are a group of people, they, they mm. are, there's some homogeneity in mm. the way they, they operate and the way they speak and the way yeah. their traditions tend to interlink, so mm -hmm. let's create a region for them. It yeah. will foster development, but yeah. that's not true. If you want to give a resource to a mm. certain district, you do that. Yeah. It's not because of a it's region. It's not because they it's belong not. to a certain group or ethnicity. I'm talking about that. Um, hmm. uh, the, um, I have Akilo, who he, he is the Fantia Kwa North communication officer. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm not an Akan, mm -hmm. but um, I'm a communication officer in an Akan area. And mm -hmm. says there's no eth ethnocentrism in the NDC. He says, I should tell you that. Well, he hasn't said there. He says that uh, the actions... I'm, I'm saying we are feeding a certain yeah. national taste for yeah. ethnocentrism okay it's national all of us we all have it uh, and I'm saying that by putting certain rules in our Constitution in our laws um, you know the NDC Constitution calls for regional balance I'm saying that call in itself feeds uh, the ethnocentric part of our psyche that's what I'm saying mm -hmm. okay then uh, oh the finder newspaper has some stories about banking and fraud <laughs> Police have arrested some staff of the defunct Unibank. Let's see if the story identifies them. But it's, a, it's a, the latest in this uh, ever-evolving saga. Elvis Darko writes this story. Uh, management of Consolidated Bank have intervened, and it's led to the arrest of a member of the staff of the bank who was accused of illegally transferring 11.3 million Ghana cities to two microfinance companies. Uh, the suspect was a relationship officer at the Accra main branch of the erstwhile Unibank. Uh, they've been interdicted of fraudulently transferring that amount, um, 9.1 million to two microfinance um, companies. Um, right, now it doesn't say the name of the staff member, which is funny. You know, when it's white-collar crime, they protect the the um, accused but if it was a goat we would have had his picture they, they would show him holding the goat wearing no shirt just his boxes at counter back wouldn't they yeah mm. all right so uh, according to um, bank of Ghana, over 90 percent of banking fraud comes from employees surprise surprise um Apparently, uh, Ghana lost uh, about 30.8 million Ghana cities to fraud in 2017. Mm. Banking fraud. Yeah, that's a revelation of the Bank of Ghana. Um, in 2016, it was 244.32 million Ghana cities of fraud. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah, 1,001 fraud incidents, uh, all reported to the Bank of Ghana. Yeah. But they say nothing here about Bank of Ghana's own fraud cases. We know that uh, the Boulders report identified that Bank of Ghana op officials took money from, uh, at least from Capital Bank, uh, to allow them to do the wrong thing. Um, but uh, that doesn't feature in this fraud report. Maybe they're, they're telling us the other side because maybe the, the actions thereof were instigated by employees of banks. I don't understand. So okay, I. So I, the employees I, of those banks, they instigated the action. Uh -huh. I killed someone, but I was provoked. 
Yes. I was instigated. Exactly. Uh, so we shouldn't talk about me. Let's talk about the person who provoked well, me. Well, they are the regulator. Their crime is bigger they than the, mine. They are the regulator. I'm sure they find good ways to punish them. When? Mm, well, beyond your prying eyes. <laughs> Beyond your prying eyes. Oh, anybody who wants to operate <laughs> beyond our prying eyes, I'm worried about them. <laughs> beyond, beyond, beyond yeah. our prying eyes. So anyway, yeah, any, anything that uh, um, you're picking um, it's up? It's just that um, Georgianda, Georgianda mm -hmm. got discharged from the hospital. He sent a, a message to all well wishers, so mm. or those who wish him well, and uh, his followers. And I'll say that speedy recovery to him. And we thank God that um, he's alive. Um, uh, he's a regular on the show, usually, yes, when yes. we're having the discussions. And Always so gracious to attend. We, uh, we, yeah. For me, I was praying for him every mm. day. Do you know I what I did? Mm -hmm. The day I heard of the accident, mm. I sent him a text message. Mm. I knew he would be in no position mm. to answer mm. his messages. Mm. But I said, bro, how are you? Mm. And then I added that I'm just leaving this year. So the day you respond, I know God has answered my prayers. Mm. And of course, the very day he got his phone back, he responded right. and it just put it put me at ease i knew that look um everything's going to be all right yeah and yeah. uh we are we are thankful we're so thankful to god uh, for bringing him through this and um not just him but all others who were injured, who were injured as uh, well. in that accident yeah but uh, again as as we say that and the reason why i brought this up was that there are some lessons that we can all learn from that yes. um george Anda is somebody i've known even before he decided to enter mainstream politics. Mm -hmm. Indo indeed, we all do. Yeah. But um, he was picked up with a helicopter. Yes. Yes. So that brings us to the point about the agency we tend to attach when people have difficulties or emergencies, if the person involved is a, is a public official. Yeah. And um, I, I ply the motorway daily. They have tried to do something about the motorway but what, this is what they've done. They've used butamine. And if you, I decided to go and read about butamine. And I didn't only really read through Wikipedia. I went through other sites mm -hmm. properly. So it means that because people always will say Wikipedia is not the best site. Mm -hmm. And apparently, butamine is, a, is made from petroleum base. Yeah. Now, butamine I know is oily or sticky and etc. And concrete is concrete. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how our engineers could sit in the office and engineer a process in which we use petroleum base, something that is sticky on a concrete surface. Mm. And do you know, since they did that, you start using it, when you reach there, your mindset is that the place has been patched. So if you're not having a firm grip on your steering, it could still throw you off. Because they know that that material is not good for the concrete. Because after const constant plying, the vehicles could make it go down mm. or maybe it could be thumped somehow yeah so it throws you off yeah it bumps yeah and i don't know how we can do that mm. we're crying that the motorway needs a facelift mm -hmm. yes in the long term or medium to long term mm. while we look for, for solutions and funding for it mm. the short-term solution is not good at all yeah it could also mess up somebody's life yeah now you know roland you know that um I, i'm an estate developer by profession the specialist work I did had to do with um, utilities, uh, bringing utilities into estates and cities. Um, and one of the areas that I studied had to do with roads and how to um, uh, provide drainage and um, you know to to lay a, a yes to lay to lay um, cables and so forth alongside roads. And of, of course, in order to learn that, I had to learn about roads themselves and the materials with which they are constructed and how to maintain them. Now, the truth is that concrete roads are some of the best in the world. Once you construct a concrete road, you have 50 years during which you don't have to worry about maintaining it. But once the 50 years are up, you must maintain it. Otherwise, it becomes a wasted investment. Now that's what we have failed to do with the Accra motorway. It's now how many years old? 60? We are 10 years beyond the date when we should have started maintaining it. So no matter what you do, every day you wake up, there will be a crack in it. Every day. Because we are 10 years beyond its warranty. That road is dangerous. 
you can patch it with as much bitumen as you want. It will just keep cracking. Hmm. And if you don't either re-level it with more concrete or simply reconstruct the road, then everything you do is a waste. The bitumen is not free. It's the wrong <laughs> uh, material, but it's not free. So we are spending money on the wrong material to fix the problem when the major issue is that the entire motorway is way past its sell-by date. The motorway has expired. Would you eat an expired um, product? Would you eat it? If the government gave you expired food and said, eat it, what happened when Dr. Baumia uh, went to de um, uh, present food in the north after a disaster? And it turned out later that Nadmo had uh, brought expired goods to be delivered. What happened? Well, how did the country react? So if you wouldn't feed the nation expired food, why would you allow the nation to drive on an expired road, cause accidents and die? Why would you do that? And again, it's about the maintenance and making provisions. But you see, the time has passed. The road is no longer good, fit for purpose. It's no longer fit for purpose. If you are going to patch it, patch and cry is a waste of time. But if you are going to patch it, then you do it the correct way. Use the correct substance so that it won't expand or contract in the space that you've put it in. It's different from what surrounds it. Yeah. I know. So On Facebook, there the, the, the are a number of people who, who started all this campaign. Beyond that, they've even been wondering why the material is being used to pass <sighs> the concrete road. But we'll see how it goes. And we but spend money on it. We yes, spend we money on I'm it. I'm told that we, it's costing our two point something million to do to, to fill the potholes. Yeah. Well, that's a rumor. It's not been confirmed, but it's something else I cited on Facebook. Oh, dear. Uh, anyway, <laughs> oh but let's dear. look at uh, myjoonline.com, mm. and um, we'll bring you some of the stories there. And uh, notably, we have NDC Decides. Here are the winners and losers. So you go to myjoonline.com, you get to find all the figures there. I hope it's been updated. When we're taking a look at it, they had, we had some potholes. Well, don't worry. Mm. We're patching it with the right material. Uh, NDC contestants name missing on ballot paper. And I, I just couldn't be in the shoes of um, uh, Edu Asari. Mm. And Edu Asari had his what fine face there, there, handsome, but his name was Justice Yeboah. Oh, children. Justice Yeboah. Have my peace this morning. But the thing I was surprised at was that the vote went ahead anyway. No, they did some compromises. I think they, they complained. You know, it led to a stalling. A stall, a stall, a stall in the in the voting process overnight. So you could right. see that for about forty-five minutes, etc. There were some concerns that were raised. Another forty minutes within uh, after an hour. Or so yeah. after I resumed, there were some concerns. But and what it was solution was deployed? I think that uh, the delegates were informed or something of the sort. Yeah. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. That, 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 you see, we talked about this here in the studio. That in but voting. I'm surprised because you know at the national level, um, the parties interested parties, those who are contesting the elections, usually have representatives even at the place where they are printing. Yes. So I'm wondering, why don't we adopt the national measures for, because now the parties are becoming bigger. Mm -hmm. The whole argument is that they want the members to feel part and parcel, but also contribute meaningfully. So they're trying to document membership, to get data, to get them also interested. So, so if you're getting them interested, then deploy the right mechanisms. So this processes. is the thing. This is the thing. It was around midnight that this, um, you know, attempt to correct the problem happened. Voting started at 5 p.m. Okay. So seven hours of voting later, somebody noticed the problem. That in itself is, is, is strange to me. That for seven hours, nobody realized this problem existed. Then they realized it. And their solution was to tell everybody that that's not justice, Yabwa. But you know, in voting, look, top of mind awareness, recognition, brand recognition, is one of the biggest influences in where people cast their ballot, especially where they have not been given any inducement. But even when they have been induced, sometimes they go in there and then they get confused and they're like, okay, wait, who am I supposed to vote for again? Who is it that I took money from? Okay, well, which of these people do I recognize? Or which of these names do I recognize? I'll vote for that one, or I'll vote for that one. So even, even 
in, a, in, a, in, a, in an election where people are inducing. When you go in there, you have to see the right information on the ballot. Otherwise, it seriously has a massive effect on how the votes go. So seven hours into voting, when they notice that there's a wrong name there, <laughs> honestly, I don't know whether the solution they deployed was effective. I don't know, because I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so um, we, we have uh, um, NDC disciples who are for whips at Budapi to lead NDC. We also have a number of um, stories that Ghana, how Ghana made it to the African home for a return of the black diaspora. Mm, we're talking about all the castles, the forts, etc. we have. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the rules to them, the way we keep them. No Voltaire in the game, NDC must think about it. Anita Disosu loses, and I think that this one has been met with sharp criticism across board. It's a shame that she's saying that, though. Reality Zone mm -hmm. with Vicky Rekun, across Kai Train. We are on the move, yo. Uh, MPP can't teach NDC how to elect leaders, and Ajani Mbwatin jobs in a Facebook post reacting to concerns that the voting process had taken too long. And um, lastly, we look at video, Koku's attempt to house the Siedun Ketia wrong at the Koka. But uh, let's move on. We have other stories there, dominated uh, by the NDC's 9th National Delegates Congress from over the weekend. We have stories on the economy. We have other stories as well. Hmm. Well, I guess uh, there's so much more to come. We'll take a break now for sports. Uh, but coming up, Mama Biyousu Abwaji gets up close and personal with the newest chairman of the NDC. She'll be live from his home where um, she's been invited for breakfast. Lucky her. Uh, and of course, we'll also bring you um, uh, that exclusive interview that Israel Lai had with Kofi Adoboli. Kofi Adoboli, forgive me. Adoboli. The, uh, the, they, they refer to him as the rogue trader in the British press, uh, but he's a Ghanaian-born trader who fell afoul of the law. But uh, what a personal story it has become. Israel Lai brings that later. But sports now.